Hello everyone, good morning and welcome back to Hearthstone. My name is Rooster and we're playing Midrange Shaman today. And that is um, that is a white descriptor. Um, a lot of decks can call themselves Midrange Shaman nowadays. So it is often useful to include some kind of other uh, description about the deck you're using. So you could call this a bl Bloodlust Shaman deck because it includes Bloodlust, or you could call it a Totem Shaman deck because it includes a lot of totems, like Double Flankedom Totem, Double Mana Type Totem, basically every single totem you can play. Mm, and also, uh, of course, the Thunder Bluff Valiant, uh, which is a mainstay in shaman decks. Uh, but mostly mid-range shaman decks identify themselves by running at least... Uh, well, most of them... I guess you can't really call that an identifier, can't you? Um, I was thinking about... I was thinking about, first of all, throwing all of these away. And second of all, uh, about the inclusion of uh, Lightning Storm in the deck. Uh, but that's also different for every uh, for everyone. Not uh, <coughs> not every shaman deck includes uh, includes mana tie totems. Not every shaman deck includes uh, hexes, lightning storms, what have you. What are we fighting? Oh, I'm I'm already feeling a little sorry for this person. Yeah, let's let's not talk down on him. Um, we might still lose this, but he just threw away a card to deal one damage to face and one damage to our to uh, our truck. So that doesn't look too great. But at least he killed it. So so there's there's something. There's something. Um, and he coined it to deal two damage to face. Okay, so we we are now officially. Well. No, no, I, I was going to say we're one card up, but that's not fair. Um, yes, yes, actually it is. He, he has just reduced his uh, his benefit. Ooh, that's nice. Uh, he has reduced his benefit from starting second uh, from a coin and a card to zero. So now he's just one turn slower than us. So I, I should be kind of embarrassed if I don't win this. I'm afraid, yes. Um, so, I'm including a Master of Evolution in this deck, and I'm not sure whether it's correct to play it right now, but it does prove to be the best board presence. And I don't really want to um, to rely too heavy, too heavily. Oh, that, no, that made a difference. It made a difference of two attacks, so that's that's good, I guess. So, so the thing there is, um, yeah, I, I don't want to rely too heavily on a wide board, so on uh, depending on my hero power. Mostly because of Explosive Trap, first of all, and second of all, do we have anything that helps us deal with Explosive Trap? Not really. If this is Freezing Trap, I would like this one to bounce, so let's attack with that one first. That's decent, that's decent. Um, and added benefit is that we can still benefit fully from our flame Tentosum here. So that's really nice. Um, and also we can get some additional benefit from this. And while I just said I didn't want to rely too much on Totems, I also don't want to throw too many cards against, uh, against this board, since this should provide exactly full. Um, and even if he manages to clear a lot here, clearing the flame tongue should be really expensive. And the way he clears this will be indicative of what kind of trap is up there. I am not sure what to expect anymore. But let's try this way. This is my responsibility. Another freezing trap, alright, so we can deal 5 to face. We can kill him with a flame to the totem right here. There we go. Yeah, I, I don't really think that person was playing a very competitive deck. Let's let's put it at that. 
Um, and that's that's the disadvantage of the uh, of the ranked system in Hearthstone, unfortunately. Uh, at the start of a new season, new players and very seasoned players will be faced with each other. Uh, because the difference between uh, the, the rank 22 that a new player will be set back to and the rank 17 that uh, that a seasoned player uh, <laughs> is, is, is set back to is only a couple of games. So if the new player survives, uh, survives a few games, manages to win a few games, then he'll suddenly be facing legend rank players. And um, yeah, that's that's just how the ladder works, and it's unfortunate that it has to work like that. To be honest, I really like this hand altogether. I really like it. Yes, if he coins out a fiery bat, then I will uh, play the flame juggler. Ooh, this this could be killer. This is basically a 50-50 to win the game here. Um. And we can make a pretty good case for ourselves here. There, there is no sorry emote. There is no sorry emote no, anymore. But that's that's the risk he, he's gonna take, and he knows that. He, kn he knows that when he. Yeah, yeah. That that's hard to crawl back from. <laughs> that's just the sad truth. Um, that was going to be a face hunter, I think, and if a face hunter can't grab the board on turn one when he starts, then he's going to have a rough time. Because if he can't deal any face damage with minions in the early turns of the game, then he doesn't have enough burst in his deck to finish his opponent before his opponent finishes him. So yeah, that is really unfortunate. Um, <laughs> I'm afraid it is. Okay, so uh, let's let's hope for a little more opposition here. And again, I really like this opener. Um, yes, yes, I'll keep all of this. Greetings, friend. So um, I, I might consider coining out uh, both of the one drops in turn one. Uh, but since I have the coin with the Feral Spirit, um, I think I might as well go for the Tunnel Truck here. Uh, because coining Feral Spirit is actually pretty sweet. Especially since we have a one drop to follow up with. Which is really nice. <laughs> you wanna buy a funnel cake? And against the 2 2 on the board, I think that's pretty sweet. So I'll, I'll be happy to do that. I could also play a Flame Juggler and hope for the 50 50. That seems a little optimistic for me. So let's go for this one. Do we even trade here? I don't think we even trade here. Let's just go for the aggressive opener, uh, because I don't see that Huckster doing too much that I wouldn't mind him trading into. Um, that might be a preparation. Oh, okay, okay, well. I wouldn't call that punished, but um, that seems like a pretty nice turn for him. After all, um, so I'm definitely taking this trade here. I'm, I'm <laughs> not gonna la leave a Thelmos up on the board, and at least that means the Thelmos is dead, so we don't have to bother with that um, at any later point. Uh, Fan of Knife's still reasonable here, although he would have to find a way to deal with this and deal with the Divine Shield, perhaps. Um, if I could get a good juggle here, that's pretty sweet, although the Flame Dunk Totem is also excellent. So I think I'll just Hero Power and uh, trade with the Divine Shield here. That seems excellent. Fight. And that's a pretty strong start, if I say so myself. Thank you. Let's see what our opponent's up to. Uh, do, do we actually... do we have lethal here? That's pretty ridiculous. That's 7, 9, 9 and 15. Yep. And that's why Bloodlust is a pretty good card. You, you, you don't want two Bloodlust because that's really clunky, but sometimes it just gives you free wins like that. 
sometimes it just happens, and well, I'm, I'm not complaining. <laughs> that's uh, that's the rogue's inability to deal with the board there, and um, and that's how it works uh, with the uh, with the new blade flurry because a blade flurry could have made a big difference there if it didn't cost four mana. <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, that card is pretty poor right now because, well, mostly because it doesn't deal with boards like this anymore. And I guess that's the reason why Shaman is so strong. Because Shaman versus Rogue used to be pretty hard. And now I would dare to say it's uh, most of the time in the Shaman's favor, unless you get a clunky opener like this. And I can't afford to keep any of those. That is much better. That is much better. Having to totem on turn two would be unfortunate, but uh, but it's at least it at least gives us some kind of board presence. So yeah, I, I would I would say that that last game was was decided at the Mulligan phase. Greetings, friend. Because, uh, well, and, and the turn one, I suppose. If I coined out a one drop there, then the rogue would have been in a much better position. And I could have actually had some trouble. Um, I think the play is still to hero power here. Just uh, for a little more mana efficiency, and we can always squeeze the Argent Squire in somewhere. We don't have a Flame Tongue Totem in hand, so it's actually not all that relevant right now. A little unfortunate, I would have loved to have a totem golem here, and it's another backstab, okay. Well, if every time I play um, a total drug they uh, they use a Felnos and a backstab on it, then, then I'm uh, perfectly okay with that. Um, Fan of Knives would really suck here. Fan of Knives would really suck here. In that case, let me do it this way. I'm, I'm a little scared about the Tuscan Totemic. Um, and this at least gives us a way to kill the Thelnos if uh, if she plays a pen of knives here. Although we do lose our efficiency for next turn, so perhaps I should have just taken the risk. Maybe I should have. I actually think that would have been correct. But, well, at least she, f she fans here, so... Um, either she trades the Thelmos, or I trade into the Thelmos, and that's still fine. Um, and that does mean I get to grab the board, and that's a pretty good dump deck. So don't mind that. Don't mind that one bit. Um, sometimes, sometimes mid-range shaman can play a little bit like aggro shaman, and and that's fine. Um, I, that means I get to trade into the 5-4, or I just get to go face. I'll, um, I'll always do... The, I could actually hex that. Is that ridiculous? I don't really mind hexing that, to be honest. Although it does still leave us with only the 7-7, seven, seven, but we can deal 7 damage to face. And then hex, and then have nothing on the board to deal with the zero one taunt. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. She's already used the fan of knives, and I even get to heal. I think I like that enough to make this trade. Yes, if if um if that were anything but a healing totem, well, if if it was a mana tight totem, I would also make the trade. Um, but I think in e in all other situations, I would have just went for the seven phase damage. Because chances are are very high uh, that she trades the five four into the faceless anyway. Um, is this an auctioneer? No, no. Okay. See, and I'm still okay with this um, because I still get to keep the board for most. Well, yeah, yeah. I mostly still get to keep the board. So that's fine, um, and I get to play Fire Elemental next turn, and anything that comes out for... Oh, well, that's that's a big thing. So I'm, I'm certainly happy I didn't use a Hex there, <laughs> also. That's, uh, that's a real... That's a real thing, because that's the most likely Hex target we have in that deck. Um, so question is, do we, uh, do we use the Flame Tongue Totem here, or do we just Hero Power up? And that's... Interesting. Do I really need the Flame Talk Totem? How much does she feel threatened by the Flame Talk Totem? Actually, I'll just hex this, hit it, 
and Hail Power. Uh, because the Flame Tongue Totem is much more effective, if I have some totems, I am willing to trade away. And uh, the, um, the Valiant also becomes a lot better this way. Especially since I have two Valiants in hand. That's a likely next turn for me. I got the best deal I'll, I'll confess that I didn't really think that through, but... In hindsight, that seems like a really obvious move. If she conceals here, we might be in trouble. Although we are still on 40 li uh, on 30 life, so... Um, yeah, she gets to have a pretty good turn next turn, but I, I would say... I have a pretty good turn myself here, so I, I don't, still don't hate it. Um, yeah, I just have to make a really big board and hope for the best, because I don't have a way, uh, a way to deal with that, so I just need to be as threatening as possible. Just generate a lot of problems she has to solve instead of dealing a lot of damage to my face. And Taunt Totem is really convenient here, but it was a 1 in 2, so I could basically expect that one. Um, and if any reasonable percentage of this board lives, then I feel really good about myself. Uh, which will be hard, uh, unless she has like Azure Drake, Preparation, Fan of Knives, then it's going to be really rough to deal with this. So I, I don't feel too bad about my chances, even, uh, even though she did, she did get the, um, the Auctioneer and the Conceal together. Auctioneer coin conceal selves. Even. Yes. Um, so, needs to get rid of that, uh, but that's okay. The Auctioneer probably attacks into the 2-1, so that's fine. That means we are likely to be able to kill it next turn. Um, kills the Healing Totem, that's, uh, that's a smart move. But we still get to trade our spell power totem into that one and just play the Titanic again, the, um, the Jouster. Or do we go for Fire Elemental? Fire Elemental is also, also pretty sweet and that lets us hero power again. Um, I prefer that one actually. Because the Totemic, uh, I, keep, I keep calling it Totemic, but that's not, that's not what it's called. Oh, and I get a healing to totem again, so that's pretty sweet. Yes, um, yes, I think that's correct. So she might have a lot of damage in hand, but we are still at 30. We killed a thing, and we have possible lethal on board for next turn. Because that's 11 damage plus possible 4 from the totemic. Hmm. It's not a totemic! Stop, stop, the Valiant! That's it. It's not a jouster either. No, it's a it's a valiant. Yes. There we go. So we we basically only needed a flame totem, and she she knew we had lethal on hand, by the way. So that, that healing totem was really convenient, I'll admit. But we probably still had lethal if she met if she managed to kill one totem. Yes, we did. All right. I I don't feel so bad about that then. That, that was a really uh, really good curve and if you can force the um, force the rogue to to waste their thelmos like that early then you're in a pretty good spot because bards full of totems get really tough to deal with in that case oh a priest you don't see priests that often especially since um, since priests are pretty much regarded as the worst class in constructed at the moment, and quite possibly also the, the worst class in arena, which is actually really unfortunate um, <laughs> to, to have both happen at the same time. But that's um, that's just the truth of the matter right now. Priest uh, priest is just really lacking in uh, in ways to uh, to properly deal with mostly shaman, I guess. Um, I did lack uh, a decent opener here, but that's also because I, I'm playing a deck that's a bit more, uh, a, bit, a bit slower. Just basically a bit slower. I'm going for the Flame Juggler here, just because um, I would like to be able to play Feral Spirit next turn. And uh, the Shadow Art Pain is a little less painful if it doesn't land on a Totem Golem, so that's pretty sweet. Managed to dodge the bullet there. 
Um, and Feral Spirits should be pretty nice still here. And that allows me to play Totem Golem next turn still. So I like that. No, and we're facing Cthulhu Priest. Well, that's good for a diversion. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what to expect, but we'll uh, we'll see. I don't know the, the latest Cthulhu Priest uh, decks, actually. It's kind of a niche deck at the moment. Not very refined, not a very consistent deck list. Mm, how do we... How do we deal with this properly? I could hex it, I suppose, but I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of that. We could uh, we could transform this into a random 3-cost minion, that's not that great. Transforming this is certainly not an option. Uh, we could make a totem and another totem golem, which is not the worst idea I've ever had. And kind of forces a board to clear. If, she, uh, if he has a holy nova, how bad it is, is it to totem and then totem golem? He still has to trade this into one of the totem golems, so I think I'm okay with that. Um, yes, yes. And we do want to get the totem train going, just to get some value uh, with this Valiant we have in hand. Or with the, the Master of Evolution, of course. Although you should be careful about using it on a totem, because there is a, a definite non-zero chance of getting, um, of getting a Doomsayer. Uh, which would really suck. Not gonna lie here, that would really suck. Um, so let's try and play a decent threat here. Um, I guess we can just transform our uh, our spell power totem here, which is not the worst. Or we could play a blank Valiant. I don't really like that too much. Transforming the totem does have the disadvantage of not being able to Valiant next turn, but I, I suppose I'll settle for Fire Elemental. That's, it's not like that's a bad card. Well then, that's not definitely not a bad card. It, it will still die to Holy Nova, most likely, or, or Excavated Evil, but I, I would be fine with him doing that in this situation, because we still have a minion left over. If he entombs the Master of Evolution, all the better. That, that leaves us with more on the board. So that's excellent. I think we just Valiant and Totem up. That's a much better threat than Fire... Oh, we could also just do this. We have a reasonable about amount of damage on the board. And this does increase our threat by quite a margin. It's it's still dangerous, it still needs to be cleared, but we but we do get an extra card here, which is which is kind of essential. So he needs an excavated evil at this point, or we are miles ahead. So let's see how quickly quickly we're drawing this excavated evil now, because I'm I'm prone to just immediately draw them <laughs> after uh, after my opponent casts it, but not this time, luckily. Um, and we do get to kill this and make a totem, which is really sweet. And we even could play a thing from below, which I think I'll take, because he can't... Well, he's very unlikely to be able to Shadow White Death them both. So that's nice. So he has one... another Entomb? Okay, okay, that's fine. But I do still have my thing from below on the board. Uh, which I suppose he can death next turn, but then we have a board full of totems again. Um, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. We have a bunch of situational cards here, but I do think we need to keep up the tempo here. And he's used both and tombs. He might, he might shadow word this again. Do I care about Argent Squire? If he holy novas here, that's fine. It might get stolen. He might steal it. No, he might steal a taunt at him. He will steal the taunt as him over stealing this, so I think playing this is fine, especially in the case where he steals something. Okay, Shadow Art Pains that, Shadow Art Deaths this, and then I still have a reasonable board, so that's, that's sort of okay. And I have a totem, uh, that's not a totem, it's a tunnel truck, yes. Um, how screwed am I if he gets the second... 
if he gets the second. Um, what am I talking about? Uh, excavated evil. Yes. I wonder... We'll just have to deal with it, I guess. I could also, I suppose, lightning storm here. He's never going to get a bigger board, I guess. So I think I'm okay with this. As strange as it may seem. But this does let me push more damage. Um, the truck only dies to Alcanized Circle. Well, it dies to Alcanized Circle and to Excavated Evil, I suppose. Which is likely... he's likely to have one of those card combinations. Although I could be wrong. Oh, that's that's quite a, an amount of healing. I was kind of forgetting about him playing a Cthune deck again. That means there's a lot more cards. Oh, then I should definitely shouldn't have Lightning Stormed. I, I was kind of forgetting about that, so that's that's definitely my mistake. Um, do we we can't possibly hex that thing now? That's kind of a pity. Mm, we may have to Lightning Storm that then, but can we get rid of Bran? If we if we bolt this thing, we do have four damage. So how about we bolt the Bran? We don't worry about this thing. And we kill the cleric. We definitely kill the cleric. Uh, we get a 1-1 one -one totem, I suppose. Why not? And we could kill this. I don't really feel like doing that. I can do that next turn. I'm pretty sure. Although it does kill does kill this. I might not... Yeah, if he Cthulhu's it would be really unfortunate. I guess I will. I guess I will. Just do it this way. And I'm going to ignore the minion on the board for now. I have a healing totem, which would be really bad with the cleric, so I definitely had to kill that. Yeah, I guess it's fine. Um, I can trade the trog for that thing next turn if he doesn't clear my board here. That's the second death. Right, so he doesn't have a death or an entomb for my faceless anymore. That's no well, that, that at least cycles. And kind of forces me to deal with this board here. So there's um, there's the second lightning storm, that's not horrible. Which totem? He cleared the taunt totem, of course. That's uh, that's kind of obvious. Uh, so let's definitely do this. And then we get to trade our 1-1 one -one totem. I would prefer a 1-1 one -one totem over a taunt, I believe. So let's trade that in first. And see how we do. He heals for 20, so that's um, that's quite a swing. He has a Cthulhu in his hand over there, the left card. That is not a Cthulhu, okay. Hey, she doesn't need a power word shield. Cthulhu is her shield, she just said. And that's the second excavated evil. Alright, well. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, I can't afford to hex that, which is uh, going to be a little awkward. Did I overcommit there? I don't think I overcommitted. No. I am playing this flame tongue, I think. And I am going face, because I don't really care. He could hit and then heal. That's still fine, I guess. Do I get to kill it next turn, then? Do I really have to ha no, I can't. I can't possibly hex this. It's it's just out of the question. If I don't have a, an answer to Cthulhu, I die. And if I... Yes. See? If, if I hexed that thing, I would have been dead right now. And I might still be in trouble, but at least I'm not dead. And I do think my hero power is slightly better than his. Except for the fact that he does have a 4-4 minion on the board, which is uh, which which kind of sucks a little bit. I'll, I'll be honest here. And he does still have one of those heal 10 things in his deck, which is gonna suck. I've used both of my lights. That, that is my main mistake. I definitely should have lightning, um, lightning bolted that thing. But I, I, I just forgot what kind of deck I was up against, and that's really silly. And I'll admit that. I, I have to commit here. If I get behind on the board, I can never crawl back. I fight. 
Um, and this may already be a situation from which I can't recover, but that's, that's, yeah. That's the second excavated evil, and you can't play around that when he has a full, a full grip. I don't think you can. It's going to heal that up. I don't have a second flame tongue. Um, if I, if I get a bloodlust, if I get a bloodlust, I think I have to clear. That's gonna suck. That is certainly gonna suck, and that that is not even that is not even playable right now. So yeah, that's that's kind of kind of screwy here. What do I have still? I have a bloodlust, which is basically blank. I have I don't have a master of evolution anymore. He, he entombed that one. I have a flame wreath faceless, which is going to be pretty good, I think. Well, at least it forces him to some awkward trades. I have a mana type totem, which is a really slow cycle, but that's not good. I don't have a second lightning storm. I think he won this one. Uh, Tuskar Totemic, which is not going to do... Oh, well, that's not that's not a bad card, I suppose. It's far from ideal, but it, it does a thing. And there, there is one more of those in my deck, so I guess it, that's that's something. And I could stage a comeback through mostly mostly Thunder, Bluff, Valiant, or... Ooh, that's not a bad one. And that's a pretty huge threat here. I, uh, I have a Rock Biter to deal with that. <laughs> I was just looking at my deck list. What card, what card do I have that deals with that card? Well, that's, that's something. Again, it's not ideal, but uh, his hero power is actually pretty good here. I shouldn't overstate that. Um, this Tunnel Trog is not doing anything. Um, but I can play it in the same turn as the Faceless... Oh my gosh, the Entomb is wrecking me here. Well, um, I guess that's well played. Um, yeah, I, I, really, I really needed that second Lightning Star, unfortunately. Well, there's a Tantos, and that's something. Um, can I... Well, he has to waste one attack on those guys, so I guess I play the Tunnel Shrug. And hope to get something done next turn. If I, um, if he leaves a Totem up, and I top deck a Valiant, then I might be able to do some things? I don't know. Probably not. Well played. I have no time for games. Um, I don't have a second... Do I have a second Hex? I can't deal with this anymore, no. That's unfortunate. It's uh, it's basically my, my waste of the second uh, of the second lightning storm. I, I feel the shades are really strange in that deck. I don't I don't know if that deck needs the shades. Perhaps it's some kind of Cthulhu plus Nazoth deck. That might make sense. That actually might make sense. Yeah, so, so basically just forgot what my opponent was playing. Um, and that's important to keep in mind. If I knew, if I realized at that point that I was playing against Cthulhu Priest, well, Cthulhu Priest gets a big board, so you can't possibly Lightning Storm just one guy. And then it's definitely the better call to Lightning, uh, to Lightning Bolt it. Um, I, the reason I was saving the Lightning Bolt is because against a Control Priest, it might just be the last three damage you need to... Is this good? I don't think the Feral Spirits are keepable here. Um, against the Paladin... No, I, I think I would rather get something else than the Feral Spirits. That's not that much better, but... It, it sits on the board. It's a, it's a thing. And, and that's a curve. That's, that's a real curve. I, I have turn 1 till turn 5 planned out here. And that's not awful. Uh, well, that's going to be a little awkward. But I can't play it right now. I don't think I can. Maybe I um, I get something worth overloading on a later turn. Yeah, that might be a thing that happens. Elder Peacekeeper, alright. We kind of don't have a way to deal with that right now. So I may just have to endure it for one turn 
and then we'll see how it goes. Um, we can possibly pay, play Tunnel Drug here, so I guess we'll Totem and just go face for now. Let's see what he's up to. Um, at least he's not using it on our faceless, so that's okay. Um, and we'll definitely trade into that. He's hitting the Totem Golem though, that's interesting. That is definitely interesting. Um, we can make some trades here and then evolve, which is not... that's not awful. I could evolve the Totem Golem, but that would require me to hit face right now. Um, and I'm not sure I like that idea. Oh, and actually, if I want to do that, I could just evolve this thing, but that's also not something that's happening. I could evolve this after hitting something. I guess I don't mind that. Let's uh, let's make some trades. Let's actually make some trades here. That's fine. Then evolve this one. No, that's not a bad card actually. It it does to basically everything, but we have a way to deal with small guys. So that's going to be a real threat on the board, and <laughs> he has to consecrate that. Because that's going to deal a lot of damage to him. And he knows it. He knows that's going to wreck him if he if he leaves that on the board. So that, that's good, that's good. And I, I'll, I'll give him that Consecrate is actually not that great against, uh, against Shaman. That was also basically expected. Uh, but we have a reasonable way of dealing with this, don't we? Well, everything dies due to it, so that's kind of a problem. Let's totem first and see what we get. If that's a taunt totem, then I can certainly go face. And... well, I guess I'll trade it, I suppose. I suppose I can trade it. Do I, um, do I flame tongue here? That seems greedy. But not using Flame Tongue here also seems greedy. I wonder. So I guess this is fine. Because I do I have to actually kill him at some point. And this is actually part of that. Do I trade this? I could get a healing totem at some point, so I guess this is not that worthwhile. I could have gotten two extra damage in actually. And I probably should have. Yeah, because I'm basically expecting the Equality Pyro or the Equality Consecrate here. Um, that does allow me to... Thunder Bluff is probably preferable. Or do I really want to... I, I really can't Mana Titotum here, I think. There is a lot of I, I gotta build a board. And this is a real enough threat that he kind of has to deal with this again. He could... he cannot Ulderman plus True Silver? Did he use the coin yet? Hmm, maybe he has. Maybe he actually has, I don't know. I have to confess I don't remember. Let's see, can I kill him? Um, I can Hero Power, that means I have, uh, I have seven on the board. Um, and then... Six from hand. Seven from hand. Right. Right, seven from hand. So that's seven on the board. And seven from hand. Okay, um, just, just making sure here I'm not missing anything. Elements guide me. Yep. Um, so yeah, I did miss out on two damage. Didn't prove to be too disastrous. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Thunder Bluff Valiant is a real threat on the board. Especially if you can immediately totem, because that's that's a decent amount of, uh, of power for its mana cost. Uh, let's play one more game. I would like to do one more, yes. Um, so about Midrange Shaman, uh, a lot of different variations possible. Um, there's definitely a world where, where you would play two frame leaf faceless, two fire elementals, no fire elementals. Uh, no Valiants, perhaps only one Mana Tide, a more aggressive version, a more controlling version, perhaps even including Elemental Destruction or something. Uh, you can basically tailor your deck to whatever suits your needs. And that's really nice. Against the Warrior, I don't care about Rockbiter against... 
I actually do. But I would prefer some minions to drop on curve. If I had something to do on 2 and 3, then I would keep the Rock Biter, but this is so much better. Totem Golem is, uh, is pretty annoying. As is Argent Squire, actually. Um, so, do I just coin the Golem here? That makes for a really weak turn 2. Uh, but it's a really weak turn one, just playing the square with no real follow-up. I guess I'm keeping a coin, though, so I guess that's worthwhile, yes. I could do it the other way around and, and coin, the to coin the totem golem now and then play the one drop next turn, but that, that leaves me very little flexibility. Um, and, and the difference is relevant, I think. Slams that. Oh, that's, that's not awful. He gets to draw a card, and it might be might be important. Is there a world in which I feral spirits here? I'm pretty sure there isn't, because I just didn't. Yeah, so so in a world where you're facing a lot of aggro, perhaps uh, perhaps you might consider including a second flame juggler. Uh, perhaps an elemental destruction even, if you expect to be uh, that much behind on the board at some point. Um, how worried are we about this thing here? Mm, we kind of want to get rid of it, but it's never going to be too efficient. I could just bolt it, you know? How about I just bolt that? Is that... I bolt it and trade the one in. But what do I do? I could totem. If I get a spell power, I will. If I get a taunt, is that still good? Coining the bolt? Then I'll have three mana next turn. Three mana next turn is fine. I don't mind that. It does let me have a decent-ish board. Yeah, Tom Totem protects, protects the totem golem from whatever my opponent's trying. Slab and Fiery War Axe, for example. So he, he never gets to clear this board. And that's good enough for me to take. Uh, trading the Totem Golem in there would be really weak, because it then uh, then my entire board dies if he, uh, if he plays a ghoul. Again, I'm probably wrong here because of, um, because of him playing a Cthulhu deck. That, that kind of throws things off for a little bit. I might consider rock writing that, but that leaves me with a board with only totems. A board with only totems is pretty good if you have a flame totem in hand, though. So I still kind of like that play. I could also mana type totem, but if he then has an axe, then I'm pretty screwed. And in the other situation, I at least get, I at least get a totem. If I have feral spirits here and he axes. Then he kills my board over two turns, that's not that great. Um, I at least get to do something uh, next turn, so I think I like this. That 2 one's going to be really annoying if it just keeps killing my totems every turn. So I, I do have to get rid of it at some point. Could have considered leaving it around and then clearing it with Lightning Storm at some point. Um, might be worth considering. But he might kill two totems over his lifespan, not the biggest fan. What now? I'm expecting a minion here, and I'm expecting this flame tongue totem to be pretty good in that case. Though I've been wrong before, of course. Let's see what comes up. Another one of those, okay. Well, I'm still likely to trade that... Oh, that's not good. That is not good for me. I may have to concede the board at this point. Although Feral Spirit still does a semi-decent job, I guess. We do have to pose some kind of threat to the axe, and that's decent. That's at least decent. They can protect the totem, and then I might have something to do next turn, which is nice. I don't know, um, would a Cthulhu Warrior deck still run Double Ghoul? I'm not sure. This is already a decent 3-drop. And he already played a Twilight Elder, so he might not include ghouls, in which case that's really good for us. 
Might also not include the 2 6 taunt, which is a real roadblock for us. Welcome to the grand so, this matchup back might be good. I'm not sure, but it might be good. At least we get uh, we get some nice trades here. Um, let's see. Do we do we flame tongue here? I don't hate flame tonguing here. Although I do get a nice trade, I get a better trade this way and this way. Uh, so I would like to totem and then flame tongue. Yes, yes, I would like that. That seems like a decent trade, and if you get a decent trade, you just take it. So killing this, killing this, because in access, that's pretty bad for us again. Having a board is definitely preferable. Um, could I have placed that better? I don't think so. The 1-1 one, one was on the left, right? Left, right, left, right. I do think the 1-1 one, one was over here, so I couldn't have positioned that better. No, I think not. I'm a little dismayed at, uh, at the empty space at the left of the flank down totem, like, like there was something I could have done better, but I don't think there was. Shield slams, wow. Yeah, that's that's not awful. Okay, I was I was thinking he shield slammed the four one there, and that seemed really strange, and and it would have been. So that would have definitely been puzzling. Um, Cthulhu Warrior would run double brawl, I think. So let's not overcommit to the board. This this is already on the edge of overcommitting, so gotta be careful. Uh, definitely don't want to commit more than this. Although if we commit something, no, no, brawl is too dangerous. I was thinking about Baron Geddon here, which would kind of suck. Uh, but it would suck more if I played Mana Type Totem maybe, and he would brawl it. It would really, really be bad. No time for games. That is, uh, is a hex and a half waiting to happen, so definitely okay with that. So a hex and then just a Totem, right? Would he have brawled this? Perhaps he wouldn't have brawled this. This might not be enough value for him. Um, if we get a totem, we get a 1-1 one, one totem. Am I okay with that? I think I am. Um, is there any th situation in which I don't hex this? I don't think so. So this always happens. And I think totem always happens. So in that case, the faceless is not really an option anymore. And I think I just want to draw some cards. Um, if he wants to brawl this, that's still fine. Um, yeah, well, I, I wouldn't be happy, but I don't think... Well, I don't think last, last turn's board is brawlable, but I don't think this turn's board would be brawlable if I didn't use the mana tide, so that's probably fine. He's getting a lot of armor here, though. It's kind of awful. Um, I might be willing to trade in the 3-2, though. Or perhaps the 1-1, one, one, so I can totem again. Don't hate that. I can't hero power right now because I'm full on totems. So I definitely have to trade this one in. And then... And then I can... No, I cannot hero power, as I just said. So trading in the 1-1 th the one, one with a plus 2 buff is not an option. So it's going to be the fire elemental because I'm... Uh, I could also trade both of these guys then... Valiant and start beating down. That might be a bigger threat than the Fire Elemental, actually. Because he has to deal with that. He absolutely has to. I don't like trading in this guy, though. But let's see if he uh, if he has a brawl. I would like. Uh, I would prefer losing losing the Fire Elemental over losing the um, Valiant. The Valiant is much more important, I think. And this is definitely a brawl waiting to happen. If he doesn't, then um, I'm likely to just trade in a totem and then Valiant. Because the that really means he doesn't have it. What is Emperor doing in that deck? That's curious. Wait, could I have killed... No, no, I couldn't have killed him with Bloodlust, right? That's 7 times 3 is 21. 21 and 9 on the field. That's 30 damage. That is 30 damage. Let's keep, let's keep that in mind. I'm, I'm 8 off lethal here. Um, but... 
I don't mind trading the fire elemental for the mm. for the emperor here. He doesn't seem to have. Well, he could Cthulhu next turn. Would that be bad? It would be kind of bad. But at the same time, I think if I make this trade and this trade and then do this. Then I'm really likely to win next turn. I don't care about the spell power, I think. That's the... No, I don't care about the taunt. The taunt is the least relevant element of this part here. I still get to draw a card, and I get to kill him next turn if he doesn't clear. That's pretty sweet. I don't need to commit more. I'm pretty sure I get to kill him at least. He's got to remove something. Let's see if he's able. We've got 7, we've got 14, and then we've got Bloodlust for... Oh, that's, that's absolutely crazy. He needs to get rid of the Valiant. And then... I can just... Oh, that's that's a lot of health, though. That's 40. And then he can Hero Power, that's 44. There's the Brawl, okay. Uh, then, we, then we just slowly build up the board again. That's the first Brawl down. I get to keep a 2-2 healing totem. Okay. Well, he found it. He found it. Uh, but we can easily build up a big board again. We do need our totem, so let's start with that one. Um, a big guy will probably help. So how about this one? And this one. And do we need to commit more? He doesn't have to. He can he can top deck the second brawl. Let's let's make sure we have enough threats on the board. This is a threat. And do I need to commit more? Can I kill him next turn if uh, if he only armors up? He has thirty eight. That's so much health though. I can deal 15 extra. I can possibly kill him next turn, I think. In that case, we pass. We get one round of damage on him, and then I think we can kill him. No, that, that would be impossible. I have I have 12 damage on the board. Oh, there's the Cthulhu, right? I don't really have a great answer right now, although I do still have a board, which is pretty great. I like having a board. Oh, and I don't hate taunting up here. Okay, um, we can deal some real damage here. <coughs> Let's see. Um, would that be dangerous? Yes, it would be dangerous. But I think we can. We can definitely not kill him. Uh, getting a taunt item is pretty good. Then we're throwing out this one. And what else do we play? Do we play the 5-5 five five with taunt? He's, he's offering a card. I'm, I'm kind of scared now. Let's just deal the damage right now. I think we'll just deal the damage right now. Is that crazy? We get rid of the armor, that's kind of important. And then we... Then we play this. This survives Geddon, that's good. Things that survive Geddon are pretty good, I'd say. Sure. I don't want to commit the 5-5 yet. This board is, is very, very gettable and bra brawlable. Those are amazing words, by the way. Those words are pretty amazing. Um, so yeah, he has to deal with this. I have three tones in the way of blocking Cthulhu. So he has to brawl if he has it. Or he can double armor up. That's pretty... Oh, he doesn't have double armor up. That's good. In that case, I think he's dead, right? Is he dead? Please let him be dead. If he's not dead, then, I, then clearly I didn't commit enough. I have. I have 12. I have 13. 13 and 15 equals 28. So just the blood bus does it. Let's just... Yeah, there we go. He knows it. He knows it. Alright! Well, that was sweet. We did get to see some Cthulhu more here, even though um, it's not from the right side. 
Uh, but we'll get to that for next week, I promise. Um, let's see, Midrange Shaman. That's uh, That was pretty neat. And I can really see how this deck um, is functioning on the ladder and gets to smash its opponent pretty often. Um, oh, um, by the way, one thing I didn't cover is I, I run no Doomhammer. Um, and it's mostly just because there's so much weapon removal right now. Everyone and their mother is running Ooze running Harrison, so it gets stuck in their hand, because they really can't play it, uh, unless you play a, a weapon. So I play none, and just play, uh, um, I think, a Master of Evolution, or a Fire Elemental in its place, and it's yeah, proving to be effective. I like it. Alright, so that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any deck to, um, to recommend for me to play this month, please leave a comment below, and I'll check it out. And I'll see you next time.